Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up this week's theme of sinister tones, listening to music that is ominous or antagonistic, just a little bit creepy and eerie and maybe even a little evil. We though, though we haven't really had anything I'd say on the evil side, uh, I kind of mentioned at the beginning of the week that, to me, something really sinister would probably be in the black metal realm, and we went the whole week without any black metal, so that's real interesting. We almost had Neurosis, and I don't know if they're black metal or not, but I kind of have them in my mind, definitely on the more extreme side of metal, just don't know where. That would have been, I think, the most extreme music we had this week. Now, if you've checked... The title of the video, which I mean you probably have, you'll know we're not listening to metal today either. We're going to be checking out a game soundtrack. This one being for League of Legends. We're going to be looking at the champion theme for Fiddlesticks after, I suppose, a re rework, maybe a visual overhaul. All I know is I played League of Legends back in like the 2000s, late 2000s, 2010s, I don't know, somewhere around that time. I don't remember when it came out, but I was like in, I must have been in college. And Fiddlesticks was this cute little, like, uh, like, like a cartoon scarecrow on a stick and he bounced down the lanes. <laughs> like, he was, he was not this terrifying beast I see in the thumbnails. So, uh, like I said, I, I guess there was some sort of rework and this might be a new theme for him because the old one I don't think really had a sinister concept going on. <laughs> I don't know. Let's dive into this and see what Cole Hicks is bringing to the table with his theme for Fiddlesticks. Yeah, that is not the Fiddlesticks I remember. Even the name's kind of cutesy. This thing is not cutesy anymore. Certainly unsettling. Okay, I can get behind this. I love the timbre shift, or timbre diversity between the heaviness of our strings and the lightness of the vocals. Also, it looks like we have a child, or it sounds like we have a child and an adult vocal. I love that back and forth. It's very cool. Very cool. Yeah, lots of great ideas in there. I mean, uh, a majority of it, right, is very eerie children's story about probably this thing, this, this monster. Um, I didn't pick up many of the lyrics. 
I just remember uh, Run Home, so there's definitely uh, an element of terror in, in the lyrics. But I think musically, the first like 70%, 80% of the song captures a very specific eeriness, an unsettlingness. Something is uh, off. Maybe it's nighttime and you're seeing movement out of the corner of your eye, and when you look, there's nothing there. Something just beyond your periphery is stalking you. That is what the opening feels like. A fog has begun to set. The moon is uh, high in the sky, casting light down, and then a cloud comes and blocks out the little bit of that. Definitely eerie. Definitely ominous. We also have the vocals, which I think are a wonderful idea. I kind of touched on this in reaction. But we have two vocalists, and I think one is an adult female, the other one is a child. Um, and I really like the diversity that they bring. Because there's this, this warmth, a little bit of a lower tone that the adult brings to it. And it almost has, it loses some of the innocence in favor of uh, almost like a, a realism. Uh, and I don't know if realism is right. Maybe that gets the thought across, but like uh, an idealistic approach to this, right? The child element kind of has this childlike uh, wonder to everything. So everything's kind of heightened as a kid, which means the terror might be heightened. So they sing about this monster that uh, forces kids to run home or whatever, you know, whatever the lyrics say. They're like, okay, but kids are afraid of the dark, right? And then you have an adult chime in with the weariness of their voice, the experience that they've had in life, and they better grasp on reality come in and also tell you to run home. And I think that kind of cements it down where it's not just a children's uh, fairy tale, a, a children's story, a, a scary story for children kind of thing. And there's like, there's there's some realness to this. It, it, it hammers things home in a way that I think I never would have thought about. And it kind of makes me want to play around with that idea as well in my music because it's just never a quality I ever considered that hearing a child's voice and hearing an adult's voice could alter the interpretation of the words being said. It's just a phenomenal component. Uh, Cole, just great job with that. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, but then I also love how both of their vocals are... Uh, a bit higher pitch wise than every everything else in the music, whether it's um, some of the more uh, digital elements, the synthesizer stuff, or whether it's the strings that make up a majority of the sound at the beginning of the track. It creates this distance, this space between those being terrorized and the terror. It separates them out musically. It distances them. And I think that's very cool too, just from a like a storytelling or narrative element. That these two voices couldn't be further apart pitch wise, and they couldn't be more different in the story. That there's definitely a power dynamic there, where one is quite a bit more in control of the situation than the other. Just really great. Um, wonderful way to build characterization and storytelling in a simple little theme. Also, all of this just comes together into, like I kind of mentioned, one of those scary story kind of things. There's definitely tension and, uh, and eeriness, ominous elements to the music just on the bass level. Everything else is sort of encoded underneath that. But I think anybody can listen to this and be like, oh, this is kind of creepy. <laughs> so you 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 have that base level idea and then you have all this additional stuff underneath it and it's just so wonderfully written now after this we have like the final 10 20 seconds of the song and this is where some industrial sounds begin to come in uh, we start playing around with what i think is one of the most important aspects um, is space it's timing 
The thing with acoustic instruments, which a majority of the song is strings, they're acoustic instruments, is that you can't, I mean, you can just abruptly stop the sound. Uh, in this case, you just put your fingers over the strings to stop the vibrations. But even with that, the sound still resonates. The sound waves have still come out of it. You're stopping more sound waves from coming out of your instrument. But the ones that are present are still out there and they still reverberate around based on the acoustics of the room and whatnot. There's no way to just immediately stop sound. That's a very unnatural characteristic of audio. By the end of the song, though, we begin playing with uh, just, it sounds like just deleting parts of the, uh, the string performance. So the notes that the strings play stop, but there's also no reverb, no extra... Uh, tapering off of the sounds. It's very unnatural and to me at least very unsettling and this is not how these instruments should sound. There's something abnormal going on here. It's something that happens a lot in electronic music and I think when you take that component and you put it with acoustic instruments it comes off as very creepy and so we begin to incorporate that and underneath these ideas we have these mechanical sounds approaching and they kind of sweep in, swell up volume style, and then by the end, they're very dominating the sound. And it's this very rigid, mechanical, calculated thing going on. It just sounds like metal crunching. And I don't think this would have fit with who Fiddlesticks was originally. When I break for lyrics, I'll see if I can find some pictures of the what I'm trying to remember, I mean, again, this was like a decade and a half ago or something. Maybe I'm misremembering it completely, but I'll see if I can find some pictures. Uh, and that way y'all can sort of compare this version of Fiddlesticks with who I know. <laughs> um, but this one is very metallic. He has these metal arms. Uh, he has the the rib that looks like a... Uh, a metal bird cage. Uh, his teeth are all metal. Like he's not. He's not a, a. He's not a scarecrow made out of hay anymore. He's like this metal monster with scythes and stuff. Well, I think he originally had a scythe too, but this one's very metallic and edgy. It looks like a, a reaper scythe more than a working scythe. Um, but yeah, very metallic now and introducing this mechanical element to the music at the end. Uh, to me, it says that the danger isn't on the periphery anymore. It's right in front of you and you know what it looks like now. And so the music has shifted its characteristics from this vague element of unsettlingness to this monstrous mechanical music. Um, so yeah, just like on every front, the idea of characterizing the music based on this this person, this character, and utilizing every element of them visually and maybe even how they move and act, what kind of moves they have, bringing that into the music and finding ways to showcase all of that, I think works really well, all within a framework of something that is rather familiar. It's such a simple song and it conveys so much. And that to me is peak theme writing. I'm gonna take a moment to hit the lyrics here and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, uh, yeah, so this fiddle sticks is a little different. Uh, the original is a bit different than I remember. Like I said, I thought it was uh, like a cute little scarecrow on like one of those those tea sticks and he kind of bounced on the stick. I think I might be thinking of a fighting game character now uh, instead of this one, but you can see he was definitely a lot tamer. There's definitely, um, they were going for more of a horror aesthetic, but a lot lighter on that. Um, he has the scythe, but he's made out of wood and uh, cloth and hay and stuff um a bit of a, a lighter tone than 
that. And I mean, even the in-game model, um, it's not really terrifying. So, really big rework, um, and really, I think, amplifying the tone of them. They, they definitely went with a, like I said, the horror aesthetic of it. They just amplified that up to the max for this rework. Lyrically, it's pretty on the nose. When the fields lie calm and winds stand still, run home. As the crows make night of the fading sun, hide now. When the trees do bow as if they weep, stay down. Though its light beckons forth, a melody calls out too late. So yeah, just setting up a very scary situation. The field will calm down. The wind won't even move in his presence. When you see the crows and the sun fading and the night coming out, you know he's on his way. And as soon as you hear his melody and see his lantern, it's now too late. Just really on the nose, being straightforward about how terrifying this monster is. All right, those are my thoughts on Cole Hicks's theme for Fiddlesticks, The Ancient Fear from the League of Legends soundtrack. What did you think of this? Was there anything that stood out to you? Anything that you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you have your own thoughts or opinions about it. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you to this menu right here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That, uh, that wraps it up for this one. We do have another special selection today. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. We're going to be checking out an album. If you're curious, it's Carissa's Weird, but not like saying that she is weird, but she owns weird. It's the possessive apostrophe S at the end of Carissa. Uh, I think we've listened to them once, and they intrigued me, and I never got around to checking them out on my own, so I'm kind of excited about this one. I don't remember what kind of music it is, though, so <laughs> that'll be fun. We can explore that together, I suppose. I don't think they're one of the bigger bands. I think they'll be new for a lot of, lot of y'all, just like me. All right, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.